The NRA has called the AR-15 assault rifle the most popular rifle in America. The shooting outside a mall in Allen, Texas is the most recent in which a gunman used that style of rifle. Take a look at this graphic on your screen. Six of the eight deadliest shootings since 2012 have involved AR-15s, including in Uvalde, Texas. Now, if we expand to the grocery store shooting in Buffalo, AR-15s have been involved in 10 of the country's 17 deadliest shootings. In Buffalo and Uvalde, those assault rifles were purchased just legally by 18 year olds. So there's no doubt about it. An epidemic of gun violence has been underway across the United States. Mass killings have become terrifyingly commonplace in schools, in stores, malls, office buildings, even in medical facilities. Catherine Schweit is a former special agent with the FBI and the author of Stop the Killing, How to End the Mass Shooting Crisis. Catherine joins me now live. Catherine, thank you so much for your time today. So Catherine, no one Oh, thank you. I wish I was here under different circumstances. Well, likewise, likewise, be believe me. Um, and there is a delay, so folks, please stick stick by us. Um, so, Catherine, no one ever wants to think about this, but there have been at least 650 mass shootings now in America since that shooting at Tops in Buffalo. So if you find yourself in the middle of a mass shooting, what do you do? How do you handle yourself? You know, I think that the uh, the word that we had right from the beginning, that we've pitched for 10 years, escape, run, hide, and fight, is still good, solid advice. You can't get killed if you're not there, and that's the most important thing. And I know we've heard discussions about, well, what about a semi-automatic? Maybe you can't do that if it's a semi-automatic. But that's not true, truthfully, although a semi-automatic is likely to have maybe three times the velocity of a handgun, and it also, uh, you know, can it, it also has, you know, this, it's the same as that you can't outrun a handgun, you can't outrun a, a semi-automatic or an automatic. We don't have automatic weapons very many in the United States, but semi-automatics for sure, rifles and handguns, and you just have to try to escape if you can, and that's still good advice and should be taken by everybody. So run, hide, and fight. And, you know, it's not just grocery stores, but schools across America. What do you make of the active shooter drills that children are going through right now? And if you do have a child, how do you advise them if a mass shooting were to occur? A lot of people um, are afraid of these drills. And I think that, that you do yourself and your children a disservice uh, first of all, if you're not talking to your children about what kind of training they have in school or what kind of things they've heard in school, ask them. If you don't know, call the school and ask them because you can't help guide what your children are doing in school if you don't know what's being taught to them. And I think it is important that children, just like with fire drills, just like with tornado drills, uh, have this kind of training that's just a safety training. But I think it's important too for um, for your viewers and your listeners to remember that, you know, schools are, are safer than homes. Statistically, many more children are killed in homes with firearms than at schools. S these types of shootings are still incredibly rare, less than 1%, significantly less than 1% of the kind of uh, firearms violence that we deal with in the United States. In fact, most firearms violence in the United States is suicides. So. It's not uh, the kinds of mass shootings that we're hearing about in the news all the time. But being prepared is smart. It's not uh, hiding in the sand is not a good idea. But still, gun violence is a leading cause of death for Americans right now under the age of 19, which is why there has to be a solution to all of this. Congress did pass a package on gun reform measures last summer after the massacre in Uvalde, Texas, at that school. But of course, anti-gun advocates are saying it didn't go far enough. Catherine, why is there such resistance to simple common sense reform, like maybe red flag laws or bans on high capacity magazines? I think we're afraid as a country uh, that we maybe it's a slippery slope. And I think that's kind of a disingenuous and I say slippery slope. I mean that, oh, somehow we're going to lose all our gun rights in the United States. Um, you know, I was an FBI agent for 20 years. I carried a gun. I have guns. I understand the concept of gun safety. It includes things like locking guns up and keeping your ammunition separate. But I think there's a big fear that if we give 
compare that to how confident you are now about putting a helmet on your child when they ride their bike or putting a seatbelt on. Those were common sense approaches that we took that, yes, they restrict your safety in a car or on a bike, but they also, they restrict your movement, but they also provide great safety. I think we need to get a little more honest about what kinds of things we can do with our uh, guns and how we handle them at, in order to be able to, you know, fi fight this battle. And I, I think what you said about uh, red flag laws or ammunition or maybe uh, allowing somebody to buy a weapon when they're 18 years old that can kill, you know, 50 people in, 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 in two minutes is probably not a great idea. Uh, we need to make those, we need to take the time to pass some laws and then do the research to see which ones are the most effective. And I want to circle back to something you just mentioned, because you did mention ammunition. And there are some lawmakers, Texas State Senator Roland Gutierrez, for example, who've been pushing for things like bullet databases, ammunition databases, uh, even the, going as far as calling for ammunition bans in some instances. Now, if guns seem to be protected under the Second Amendment, could ammunition restrictions work in America? I think I would compare this to uh, after 9-11 and, and some of the things that we dealt with in the FBI in the 80s and the 90s. We dealt with a lot of explosives and we put into place uh, as a federal, uh, as the federal government put into place some kind of what we call tripwires situations where when somebody is purchasing large amounts of something that might be used, think about the Oklahoma City bombing of the federal building there, Muir Federal Building. Now we kind of look for people who might be purchasing volumes of things that might cause that kind of a, a disaster again. That's what I think is something that I think some of the legislators are considering. And it's everything is on the table and should be worth it. Whether or not it's practical is, is hard to say, but until we try it and, and do some research on it, we're not really gonna know for sure. But right now, when we have twice as many guns in the United States as we had 20 years ago, uh, when we have 20 million semi-automatic rifles in the United States, when we when we had a few million, you know, back in the 80s, I, I think it's worth trying. All right. Catherine Schwein is an author and former FBI special agent. Catherine, thank you so much for stopping by today. We appreciate your insight.